Hi everyone, this is Ashley Latecki Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today I'll be speaking to our need for altered states of consciousness and specifically altered states of consciousness with um, non-entheogenic plants. So uh, this really came to me, I, I mentioned this in one of my Instagram posts, that I had this just really profound experience the other night um, where the plants really spoke to me and I had just this real breakthrough. Um, you know, it, a lot of times these breakthroughs are not, they're not something that I did. Like I didn't create this. To me, they're really gifts. It's, it's sort of like from another dimension information, you know, a portal opens and then you get this download. <laughs> I'm like, wow, thank you. So I had that experience the other night and I, I just can't shake it. So um, I'm working on the paper right now. Um, I only have four pages written so far, but I hope to get it published somewhere or at least just share it with you all um, on this experience and on this deeper need for altered states of consciousness using gentle plants, like plants that all of us know about. For example, right before I started recording, um, I started burning a little bit of chamomile flowers, which I've never done before. I've burned a lot of herbs before, uh, but I've been really interested in chamomile lately. So I just started burning it and sitting with it and smelling it. And again, you know, this, uh, when we, when we take any plant chemical into our body, our, our, state of mind, I know any, any chemical that enters the body changes the body in some way. So we have this great opportunity while we're alive in this body to experience these slightly different altered states by using herbal medicines in a myriad of ways. Um, so I wanted to read to you the first part, sort of my, my experience that led me to this idea. And then I'll, I'll flush out the idea for you a little bit more with some um, research and uh, research on unfortunately rats, but you know, looking at rats as a model for how these herbs can, and you know, again, gentle herbs can alter states of consciousness. And then I'll share some of my herbs that I've experienced and, and have, um, have uh, experimented with and how, you know, kind of the states of consciousness, so sort of how, I, how I've experienced them working in my mind. So here we go. This is uh, the event. The other night I was laying in bed doing my usual routine of trying to slow down my mind and fall asleep. As I lay there, I felt a milky wave of consciousness sweep across my mind. Images of the ocean at night welled up. Then across the screen of my mind, I watched as smoky green filters gave way to blurred images of myself awake and wrestling with the underlying tension that was at the root of my sleeplessness. From a detached perspective, I watched the need I have to manage and control myself and others move through my muscles like vines, creating tiny, creating tiny contractions throughout my body. Then it flashed back to the image of the ocean, dark, abysmal, uncontrollable. I watched as my body surrendered into this black sea, giving itself over to these dark tides and this little girl in a grown woman's body relaxed. They whispered, it is less work than you realize. Give yourself over, untie yourself, let go. Who was this? Who was speaking? Was this my mind? Then I remembered that 30 minutes before I had laid down, I ingested a large swig of plant medicine. Passion flower, skull cap, and hops were speaking. In a divine chorus, their green medicines were showing me what I could not see on my own. These herbs were altering my consciousness so I could understand the underlying patterns affecting my sleep. These plant allies were coaching me through my own blocks and giving me the needed images so I could change my behavior. That's it. I sat up in bed. Right outside my owl, my, my, uh, my window, a barred owl crowed, hoot, 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 in confirmation. We need this. 
To shift any pattern, we need altered states to see through them. The owl continued its nighttime song and I jotted down a few notes on my nightstand. In the unseen web of the plant, human and animal worlds, the plants are the bridge. So as you can hear and gather from that experience, the plants showed me things that I needed to see in order to understand what was going on beneath the surface. Now these images, you know, these images, maybe I could have come up with on my own, but I definitely felt like I had entered an alternate state or an altered state. And I've had experiences with altered states of consciousness um, through psychedelics and theogens, all sorts of substances that I've taken into my body in my teens and twenties and early thirties. So I'm no stranger to knowing what that feels like. And this definitely felt like that, uh, where a plant medicine was showing me something very specific and deliberate. And, you know, it was like this incredible um, moment of realization because not only did I get like a download about my insomnia, but I also got the embodied, like the plants actually showed my body body what to do. It was, you know, consciously we can tell our body, hey, why don't you relax? But when a plant goes into your physiology and starts to relax it for you and you notice, oh, that's what relaxation feels like. This is what letting go feels like. Then your body has a new opportunity to dial into that feeling again and again. And for most of us, one time of taking a plant might not be enough to imprint that new way or state of being into our body, but sometimes it can. Sometimes just one glimpse or one experience of what your body or mind could feel like or the way the mind could think is enough to radically alter ourselves permanently. And this is something that the plants gift us over and over and over again. And I recognized in myself how often I use plant medicines to alter my consciousness. Uh, you know, I'm getting ready for a day of work or a day of intense mothering. And I drink a bunch of cocoa and I would reach for chocolate because chocolate has phytochemicals. It has theobromine. Um, it has a ton of flavonoids that do amazing things in the body that um, are antidepressant slightly stimulating. Um, tryptophan and serotonin that's found in chocolate create feelings of relaxation and well-being. Caffeine is a psychoactive substance that increases heart rate and alertness. Um, the theobromine is a vasodilator. Uh, then we have anandamide, which is actually a, a cannabinoid that is produced um, endogenously. So we actually create our own anandamide in our bodies, which create feelings of euphoria and bliss. And chocolate has anandamide or it, it activates, um, it contains the neurotransmitter that stim stimulates this whole cannabinoid system. So, you know, what I'm doing when I'm preparing for my day with, with cacao, the sacred plant medicine, is I'm alerting myself, I'm waking my senses up, I'm entering into it with a more blissful uh, state of being so that I can engage in a way that is gonna be more pleasing to me and hopefully to whoever else <laughs> I happen to be around. Um, so I'm altering myself by taking in that plant substance. And we do this with food all the time. We might not even realize it, that when we reach for something sour or something bitter or something sweet, that we're also playing a little bit of, um, you know, playing a little bit of doctor inside of our own body and modulating our, our inner physiology to create a, an effect that we've experienced before. And so we keep doing it to keep giving ourselves that, uh, that experience. So, you know, I think um, medicinal herbs, you know, we know the, how foods and, you know, chemicals, especially things like caffeine and, um, you know, opioids and tryptophan, we know how these things can affect our nervous system. But what about just gentle herbs? And how might these herbs give us an opportunity to really reset our consciousness? 
So I was looking into a few different herbs that have been of interest to me. And so um, I looked into chamomile. And so chamomile, I just wanted to read you some of the things I found. So one study of rats dosed with chrysin, a naturally occurring monoflavonoid found in chamomile, found these rats showed enhanced performance when moving through a maze. Not only did these rats have more restful heart rates and decreased signs of anxiety, but they also seemed to intuitively know which way to go, avoiding dead ends called closed arms and more successfully choosing open arm pathways. Due to the effect, this is partly due to the effect of chrysin binding to the benzodiazepine receptors, causing, an in, causing a decrease in anxiety symptoms. But what allows for these rats to more successfully navigate these mazes and to have a more intuitive perception, right? So we could think that chamomile is relaxing them and then certain pathways of perception are opened so they can navigate through these mazes more effectively. And what if chamomile could do the same things for us? You know, again, what if we, if we drink chamomile tea every morning or we burn some chamomile and breathe it in and really consciously let our bodies experience that relaxation response and that opening of our more subtle pathways of perception, how might that change the way we make decisions during our day, right? And I, I know you probably noticed this too. For me as a mother, it's like my easiest example, but it's like the kids start fighting. Am I going to calmly go over and, uh, you know, offer suggestions? Am I going to divert them and distract them with some flashy something else or a song or something, you know, like, like change their, uh, change the mode they're in, am I going to yell at them? Am I going to say, that's enough, you know, no more fighting. Am I going to punish them, right? What am I going to do? And if I'm in a more chamomile-induced altered state, and matricaria, the Latin name, is the mother, the care of the mother. If I am caring for the mother in me, could that give me that moment of pause to really look at my children and say, what kind of caring and tending do they need? Rather than the reaction that has come from long lines of generational responses. So again, this is altered consciousness. This is that gap that we do, that we are always looking for in yoga between the sensory experience and our response, that gap that gives us the choice of how we're going to respond. And so many herbs can do this. Um, there's also, um, let's see here, uh, passion flower contains a compound um, called apigenin. When tested on rats in this maze model, the results showed improved training session performance. And when given post-training, it enhanced the rat's ability to remember what they had learned in the maze. So apigenin is found in high, high amounts in chamomile and also in high amounts in um, passion flower. So again, remembering what it was we learned. So we have this experience of an altered state and then these compounds also remind us of what we had learned the last time we took in the plant. It's so brilliant. It's like, it's almost like every plant is a library. It's, it's, a, it's a, it contains books of knowledge and wisdom that we can revisit that can really educate us in a both a very physical way, like physically changing our body but mentally changing our perception, emotionally opening us to different feelings and experiences. And then I, I really truly believe spiritually that as a spirit soul, we're always looking for ways to evolve, to remember uh, our closeness with God, to remember the spark of the soul. And if we can use these plants to remember that and to remember that spark and the source of that spark, then isn't that in itself just a holy um, divine gift? So 
Um, so, so those are my thoughts, and those are some some examples of, of compounds that alter uh, perception. Um, and there's more. I mean, there's hundreds of more. I'm just scratching the tip here, but I, I feel like this is a conversation that hopefully gets you thinking about herbs a little differently. So let me tell you just a few herbs that um, I've had experiences with where I have really had long-term lasting changes. The first one is blue vervain. And I did a whole video um, on my YouTube channel called my personal experience with blue vervain. And this was um, happened two summers ago when I was visiting my in-laws in Michigan and I was having this terrible neck pain and just stiffness. I could barely turn my neck. And I just, I was really frustrated. I wasn't sure what to do. And lo and behold, uh, we pull up into this parking lot and there is just blue vervain. And I was, I had never seen it before, uh, like growing in the wild. And there it was taller and bigger than I had imagined, more beautiful than I had imagined. And so, um, you know, I asked it if I could harvest it and it said, yes, it was very generous. And I took the medicines and I dried them. Um, and then I made a tea, a strong tea and oh my gosh, it was so bitter, but it was exactly the taste. It was like, it was like my mouth had been looking for this plant. And as soon as it, I took a sip of it, it was like this deep chemical memory of, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> And almost instantly, I could feel it like moving down my neck and relaxing the muscles. And within an hour, it was like my range of motion came back. And that was one of the reasons I decided to move back to Minnesota was because I was like, this is a plant I've studied and learned about for years, but I've never met it in person. And it's a plant I need to be near. Like I need to be near this plant because it's a plant that Matthew Wood teaches is really good for people that are uh, control freaks, uptight, like to manage everything. <laughs> and that's a little bit of me. Um, you know, I, I've gotten better, but you know, it's, it's definitely a pattern that I noticed the sort of hypervigilance. And so, you know, this plant just was like, hey, I'm right here and you can remember me all the time. And ever since that experience, you know, something inside of me has changed. There, there was a, there was a letting go that started with that plant and has continued on. Another herb is Angelica Archangelica. This is one that I love to burn. So if I'm going to be doing a tarot spread for myself or sitting down with a client and we're doing really deep work, I'll burn in a seashell just a little bit of Angelica Archangelica root. And this is a wonderful herb for opening the doors of perception. And I always feel whenever I burn it, it's kind of like um, it just fills the space with this um, otherworldly um, energy. It's like you know, the spirit of Angelica. It's, it's very much bear medicine. It just sort of comes in and takes over the space. And there's like this very palpable presence that can help to me, that helps me tap into that um, healer, medicine keeper, uh, deep womb cave type of energies. So uh, that's that's been a really powerful one for me that I like to e e evoke. Uh, rosemary, whenever I take rosemary into my body or I have rosemary in the room, I always get this sense of uprightness and uh, like ethically upright. Like this is what I need to say. This is how I need to stand up for myself. Um, this is the energy of my deep Sicilian roots where you know rosemary grows everywhere in Sicily. But it's this feeling of I'm in my place. I know my place. I can speak my, I can speak what needs to be spoken. And, um, and I can really feel supported in that. And so that's been a really great medicine in my, in my work. Um, rhodiola is one that I started taking after Rosemary Gladstar said it was the only way she got through raising her kids and running her herbal, herbal school. And I was like, well, if that helped Rosemary Gladstar, then I'm sure it will help me. So I started taking rhodiola as a tincture. And I noticed every time I take it, I, I, it's like all my senses get sharpened and it like helps me navigate through all of the to-do lists. So I'm going to take some today because I've got family coming for the holidays, like a, a lot of cleaning and a lot of sorting to do. So, you know, just a dropper full of rhodiola and it's taste. It's like really uh, astringent and uh, acrid 
but for me, it just sort of sets me into that. Okay, we're going to focus and we're going to get this. We're going to check off the boxes on my list. Um, nettles is always for me. Um, I call it the um, nourishment snowball effect. So if I drink nettles in the beginning of my day, I tend to do more things that are nourishing for myself, like taking breaks, going for a walk. It just catalyzes in me this um, this inner knowing of how I can how I can take care and 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 uh, support my deeper needs and my deeper ways of nourishing myself. So that's a really wonderful plant, and and I drink that one as a as an overnight or a long infusion. And then skullcap, I, I used to take skullcap pretty regularly at the beginning of the pandemic, and this is skullcap lateriflora, Scutellaria lateriflora, um, not by Colensis. And so I would take this one and I would always feel like it was just like a warm blanket, just sort of like wrapped around me. And, and one of my teachers, James Snow is, would say, it's like warming, wrapping a warm blanket around your head. So it calms your thoughts. But for me, the experience I have when I take skull cap is it just relaxes. It's like when you get out of a hot bath. So I take it and it's like, I have that, I just got out of a hot bath. I'm relaxed and I'm calm and I'm warm. And then I can take that perception with me as I move through my day. And in the beginning of COVID, that was really important because I was, you know, like everyone, we were all freaking out. <laughs> At least I think a lot of us were because we didn't really understand what was going on and what we were, how long this was going to be. Um, and I really found that that herb was like really relaxing. So that's what I have to share for uh, this week's post. And, uh, you know, I'm just in the beginning phases of, of sorting this out and, and writing on it. So I, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you had any insights similar to this, if you want to share your stories, I'd love to maybe include those in this paper. And uh, yeah, and any thoughts that popped up during the talk? Again, you know, the more I think ideas get bounced back and forth, the, the deeper we can go together on these, um, in these, in these uh, explorations of, of, of the plants and the plant world. So to close, I'm gonna burn a little bit more of our matricaria, this mother care medicine, this chamomile, so soothing and fragrant and mothering. So to you, I waft the smoke. Mm, it is so beautiful. Please try to burn some chamomile flowers today. <laughs> just do it for yourself and for your space. Um, and I just want you to feel this and smell this and see this the way that I am right now. <laughs> So thank you all. I wish you a wonderful holiday season. If you're watching this before the holidays, I'm recording this on December 22nd, 2021. So I wish you a wonderful relaxed holidays and just, you know, notice how you alter your consciousness as you reach for a particular holiday treats and snacks and things on the dinner table and all of this. And, you know, just open yourself up to this and, and, and you know, information and, and awareness is power. So once you start to know and notice these things, you'll be amazed at how much more power you feel. So with that, my friends, I will see you all probably uh, either next week or on the other side of the year. Take care.